Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. Everybody have a question in their mind that how do we find out the preliminary size of the structural members. So today let's discuss one among them that is about how to find out the initial size of the B. So before starting let's see some important points about beams. When the load is applied on the beam it bends like this. As you all know that beam is a flexural member, flexure means bending. Since it is a flexural member, when the load is applied, so the depth is the major predominant factor in beams when compared to width. Now let's see the basic dimensions of beam for better understanding. So as you know that this is the cross section and this is the longitudinal section. So width of the beam and depth of the beam and this is the length of the beam. So length will be always the distance between support. Okay. So here I wanted to tell you one important factor. If someone says the beam depth is 15 inches, you may have a doubt that whether the beam depth 15 inches include the slab thickness or excludes the slab thickness. Let me tell you here. So here the flat surface you can see slab thickness is included in the beam okay so always whenever you say the beam depth that includes the slab thickness so for example if the beam depth is 15 inches slab thickness is 4 inches then this 4, th four inch thickness of slab is included in the beam depth okay. so i hope it is clear about the basic dimensions of beam so now let's go in detail and see how do we fix the initial size of beam we have to provide the width and depth of the beam. Always remember that in most of the cases, the beam width will depend on the width of the column and then width of the wall. Okay. So, here also you can see the width of the column is 9 inches. And then obviously, we have to provide the width of the beam as 9 inches. Okay. So, in most of the small buildings and all, we have to follow this uh, criteria but in some cases in some of the uh, multi-story building or commercial building whereas we have to provide the width of the column is more for example we have to provide the width of the column as 12 inches or uh, 15 inches or 18 inches in that cases we can uh, reduce the beam width if it is not necessary we don't need to provide the beam width uh, similar to column width we can reduce the beam width Alright, now it is clear about the width of the beam. Next, let's move on to the depth of the beam. So, here we have to follow some basic assumption to fix the depth of the beam. So, this is the basic assumption we have to follow. All we have to do is for 1 feet length, we have to provide 1 inch depth for beams. Okay. So, this is also basic assumption only. This is not the exact solution to provide the beam depth because each and every structure is different. Okay. So I'll show you two, three types of uh, different types of building uh, framing plans and then how the beam depth varies for uh, each and every structure. Okay. First, let's uh, fix the dimensions for this uh, G plus one building. Then uh, let's see the other uh, structures. Okay. Here we have the uh, beam number is beam 1 and let's see the dimension. See, this is uh, 13 feet 5 inches. The length of the beam is 13 feet 5 inches. We can say it is a span, okay. It is the span 13 feet 5 inches. So, for 13 feet 5 inches, we have to provide the beam depth as 13 inches, okay. Here, we cannot provide 13 inch depth because always we have to provide in such a way that 12 inch, 15 inch, 18 inch, 21 inch and 24 inch and so on. So because no, it will be flexible to make the shuttering panels for the beams. So here we have to provide 15 inch. Okay. Here beam 1 is the continuous beam but the span is 10 feet 2 inch. But here we cannot provide 10 inch depth because you know beam 1 is having 15 inch depth here and if we provide 10 inch depth it will be very difficult to make shuttering as well as reinforcement arrangement for beam 1 okay so always we have to keep the uniform depth for beams in some cases we can 
change because um, the load will be varying the load coming on the beams will be varying and uh, some cases we may have a cantilever beam we, we, where we have to provide more depth and then um, uh, if it is a too long continuous beam then we can change the depth but uh, not in all phases so here also let's provide 9 inch by 15 inch Next, coming to beam 2. Beam 2 is also same span. So, we can uh, keep the same depth as 9 inch by 15 inch. Next, beam 3. Beam 3 is uh, also small span only. Let's provide 9 inch by 15 inch. And coming to beam 4. In beam 4, it is a single beam. Whereas, one side is a column support and other side, it is resting on this small cantilever portion. Let's see the spacing between support it is 16 feet 5 inches which is closer to 18 so that is why we had provided 9 inch by 18 inch next coming to beam 6 the span is 17 feet 2 inches which is close to 18 so we had taken as 9 inch by 18 inches beam uh, size next beam 5 beam 5 is here so here we have very small span beam 5 beam 5 the span is between column to column okay so this distance we have to take uh, if we take it is around 9 feet 7 inches but uh, still we have to provide 15 inch uh, depth because you know here um, this beam 12 is the secondary beam beam 5 is the primary beam whereas this beam 12 is the secondary beam which is uh, partially resting on this column and partially resting on beam 5 okay so here we can check the beam 12 span span of the beam 12 is 13 feet 5 inches so obviously we have to provide beam 12 sizes 9 inch by 15 inch since the beam 12 is resting on beam 5 so we have to provide the same size to the primary beam as well. So here you have to understand this concept clearly. Always the primary beam and the secondary beam should have equal depth or else the primary beam should have more depth than the secondary beam because this uh, secondary beam transferring the load to the primary beam, right? So always it should be more than the secondary beam. Next, coming to beam 7. Beam 7, let's check the span. So here 17 feet 2 inches so we had taken as 18 inches and then uh, it is a continuous beam so we had provided the uniform depth. So friends similarly you can um, arrange the beam size for all the beams. So this is for a small building which is G plus 1 building but this will not be same for all the buildings even for small structures also framing and then load loads everything will be different. So, the same size cannot be applied for another structure. So, now let me show you some of the other framing plan. So, here I have the framing plan of commercial building which is having different column size as well as different beam size. So, here the beam size is 24 inch by 24 inch and then now let's check the column size here which is 2 feet depth and one feet width yeah it is 12 inch width column but here you see the beam one width as eight inches okay so as i told you before here we are not matching the beam width to the column width so always we have to change the beam size according to the requirements let's check the span over here column to column we take it is 13 feet 9 inches but still here we had provided 24 inches depth beam okay because the load may be uh, more so that is why we had taken uh, depth of the beam as more as i told you before here one feet length is equal to one inch depth so that concept will not work here because now according to the load coming on the beam we have to provide the size Next, let's see here, beam 3 is 8 inch by 18 inches and then beam 5 is also 8 inch by 18 inches. 
Next, let's see another framing plan. So this is one of the uh, framing plan of hospital building. So which is having um, um, different column size and then beam size as well. So here the dimensions are mentioned in uh, mm. So here you can see this beam uh, size we are providing it as 450 by 750. It is a multi-story building. So that is why we are uh, providing this much uh, size. It is a basement area, basement uh, framing plan. So the column width is 450 and then we are taking the beam width also 450 here. And then uh, uh, see everywhere it differs. So here we are taking the beam uh, size as 600 by 750. And then uh, if you see here we are taking as 450 by 750. And uh, somewhere you can see it is 300 by 450. So friends, as I told you before, the uh, structural member sizes cannot be same for all the buildings. For example, uh, you can uh, uh, say that for one building, you are providing a beam size of 9 inch by 24 inches. So the same beam size cannot be provided for the other building because the loads coming on each building will be different. So the sizes of the structural member always depends on the loads coming on the structure. So this is the major thing you have to remember always. And then you can uh, assume some of the sizes and then you can do the analysis. After analysis, you can design the structure. You can check whether it is uh, uh, satisfying all the uh, criteria. For example, if you uh, if you are designing a beam, you have certain criteria according to the codes and standards. So it, if the size satisfies the codes and standards and then you can uh, proceed with the same size or else you have to revise the size. Either you have to reduce the size or increase the size according to the requirements. So friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. Your comments are always welcome. And don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.